The NASCAR Cup Series race has a fish included from the Chicago Street Course, and we see a lot of chaos, a lot of cautions, and Shane Van Gisbergen picking up his first premier NASCAR Cup Series victory. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to your video. I just got done watching NASCAR Cup Series race from the Chicago Street Course, the first ever NASCAR Cup Series a street race ever at the Chicago Street Course, the Grand Park 220. We have quite a bit to talk about from this race. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So, before the green flag dropped in today's race, obviously this race got delayed by an hour. This race was supposed to originally start at 4 or 5 Central Standard Time, but the race got delayed by an hour and a half. And once we got going, Austin Cindric, William Byron, Justin Haley, Todd Gillen would go to rear front to prove adjustment and Kevin Harvick, Chase Slay, Ricky Sennos Jr. will all go to the rear for backup cars after crashing in practice and qualifying. So at the start of the race, he actually told the drivers they were going to have to go on wet weather conditions, meaning single file restarts, and basically everyone would be single file at the start. So at the start of the race, he had Denny Hamlin lead the field from the inside, basically lead with, and going to get a really strong start, was able to clear for the lead. But Todd Reddick got a really strong run going into turn number one and was able to pass Denny Hamlin for the race lead. Meanwhile, as we're going through the lap, a lot of chaos started happening. First, Eric Armour, he spun off at turn number five, and then we saw a three-car pile up between Brad Keselowski, Noah Grayson, and Eric Jones, who all got in a tire barrier, but they were luckily able to continue on. Then on the next lap, Denny Hamlin made a major mistake going to turn number two, and he hit the inside tire barrier really, really hard, was able to continue on and drop a lot of positions. The first caution note will come out the next lap for Kyle Busch, who basically went way too hard in the corner and slid straight into the tire barrier and got stuck in the tire barrier, but they were able to pull him out and was able to continue going on. These cars are really, really strong, and the crowd was cheering after that. So then at the restart of the race, you got Todd Reddick who led the field back to green. Todd Reddick would dominate the early portion, but continue leading, but as the run went on, Chris Abel's car really started coming into play and was eventually able to pass Tyler Reddick for the race lead. Then he had a little bit of chaos happening. First, he had Todd Gillen. He basically went off course, able to continue on. Then a few laps later, he saw Corey LaJoy and Alex Bowman. They have contact, but they will continue on. Meanwhile, the next lap, the second cross race would come out for Noah Griggs, who went into the tire barriers really, really hard in turn number six and got stuck bringing out the caution. And basically, this would not be the only time a Noah Grayson would get in the tire barriers. Because of this, we all saw a little strategy where 10 cars came down pit road, and then Ryan Blaney was the first car off of pit road. So then on the restart, he had Chris Abel lead the field back, and he would dominate the early portion, and he would come off the final corner and win stage number one. Then basically, we started seeing guys come down and put slick tires on because the dry line was starting to come into play. First, you had Chase Briscoe to Alex Bowman come in, but they were starting to basically uh, slide a lot, a lot around because it was basically new. Then we saw Jensen Bunn get cut off by Chris Busher and spun. Basically, Jensen Bunn's way too high up on the racetrack, obviously making a second career cup series start, and he spun out, but the race is able to continue going on. Then we saw Chase Lay go off in turn number two and hit the wall right after exiting the pits, was able to continue on. Then all the rest leaders came down pit road. They had Chris Rowe and Reddick come in, and then Shane Van Gisbergen decided to stay out. Then the next lap, Shane Van Gisbergen would come to pit road for Slicks. And then a few laps later, we saw Noah Grace to bring another caution out for once again getting stuck in a tire positions, pretty much in the same position. And basically, we went back racing after that because Noah Grayson was able to get his car back going. So then we went back racing in lap 33 with Chris Savelle leading the race. Meanwhile, Corley Joy was spin on the restart in turn number 11, was able to continue going on. And then Mark Trick Sr., he got an outside wall really hard and got a lot of damage. But at this point, Kyle Larson's car really started coming into play and was able to pass Tyler Reddick for second position. But then on lap 39, we would see trouble strike for Alex Bowman, who spun coming off at turn number 11 after some contact for Denny Hamlin. Both Denny Hamlin and Alex Bowman were basically sideways going into the corner. And basically, Alex Bowman could not get back going cross across the track and brought the caution out. So at this point, a lot of people were starting to think that they were going to shorten the race. So 11 cars came down pit road, including Kyle Busch, Bubba Walsh, Kevin Harvick, and I believe William Byron as well, Romano's guys, and Chase Sully, Romano's guys that came down pit road. So then on the restart, Chris about lead the field back to green, and Daniel Suarez had a terrible restart going to turn number one and hit the outside wall really, really hard. Then we once again have another caution with 32 laps to go for Alex Bowman, who stopped on the racetrack between turns five and six. Alex Bowman blew his engine up. They were trying to get the engine recycled, and they couldn't get it recycled, and that brought the caution out. And under caution, Chris Bell would win stage number two. And then NASCAR made the call and decision on lap 46 to go ahead and shorten the race to 75 laps due to the upcoming sunset because with the race starting so late and getting delayed too much, they decided to shorten the race. So then all the lap cars would come down pit road, with Cursewell being the first out of the pits. 
and then went back racing on lap 48 with Justin Haley being the leader and Austin Dillon being second. Meanwhile, Chris Bell would be 12th and Kyle Lars would be 13th. Just here we get a really strong restart, but on lap 49, we would see a memorable moment and a traffic jam happen going into turn number 11. William Byron went way too hard in the outside wall, and Corley Joy had to check up and ran into the back of Kevin Harvick, and this unfortunately had, was a traffic jam that caught Eric Amarola, Bubba Wallace, Mark Trex Jr., Kyle Larson, Eric Jones, Denny Hamill, Chris Wall, Michael McDowell, William Byron, Ty Dillon, and Ryan Priest were all involved in the situation and the incident, which would take Chris Ball pretty much out of contention. So then on the next restart, you had Justin Hilly lead the field back to green with Austin on Chase Lake pursuing. Then Mark Trick Jr., he got loose and basically spun out, was able to continue going. You had a lot of contact basically happening at the time. Once again, lap 53, we saw Noah Grayson make another spank and spun and hit the wall. And then we saw Christopher, he ended up wrecking himself going to turn number one. And then another lap later, a couple laps later, the next caution would come out for Tyler Reddick, who got stuck in the tire barriers, bringing out the caution once again. After having a car that could have easily won this race, he took himself out of contention. Then went back green about 17 laps to go with Justin Lee bringing the field back to green with Austin Dillon close behind. And as Austin Dillon was trying to make a pass and attempt to get by him, we saw Austin Dillon get really hard into the inside wall and would take himself out of the race because of the damage. I thought a caution was going to come out because of that, but he's able to continue going. And then with about 12 laps to go, we saw Martin Truex Jr. slide into Kevin Harvick going to turn number one. And unfortunately, Harrison Burton had nowhere to go and he got in the inside turn tire barrier, but the race was still able to continue going. Then we continued going as Shane Van Gisbergen was really starting to charge up to the front and got up a second position. It was about to pass Justin Haley for the lead, but then Mark Trick Jr. once again would hit the tire barrier, bringing the caution out. Then we went back green with about five laps to go with Justin Haley leading the field. But it really came down to battle between Justin Haley and Shane Van Gisbergen. And Justin Haley got a really strong restart. Shane got a little loose. But as the run continued on and going to turn number two, Shane Van Gisbergen got a really, really strong restart and was able to pass back for the race lead. They tried to paint back and forth for the lead, but eventually Shane was able to clear. And it looks like the Shane Van Gisbergen is going to cruise to victory. It's about a two-second lead. But then we saw Bubba Wallace get spun into Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Basically, I don't know what happened to Bubba Wallace. I think something happened to his car because he just shot straight back into Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And they collided in the tire barrier, bringing the caution back out. And that would be the final caution of the race. I'm not sure what happened to Bubba Wallace. So then on the final race start, Shane Van Gisbergen would lead, followed by Justin Haley and Chase Elliott. Shane Van Gisbergen got a really, really strong race start and was able to clear for the race lead. Justin Haley tried to do his best in the final couple laps to get up to Shane Van Gisbergen. As it came to the white flag, Shane Van Gisbergen had about a one to one and a half second lead. They were trying to close on him near the end of the race, but it would not be enough. And coming off the final corner in his first career NASCAR Cup Series start, Shane Van Gisbergen picks up his first career NASCAR Cup Series victory for the Project 91 team. I haven't talked a lot about Shane Van Gisbergen on this channel. But I've been watching Shane Van Gisbergen for the last years from the Repco Supercar days. This guy is one of the most incredible drivers I have ever seen in racing, regardless of what he races in. Whether it's supercars, whatever series he gets in, he always competes up front. He's won championships in supercars. And there is a reason why Justin Mars gave this guy an opportunity. And when he crossed that finish line first today, I was excited and pumped. I haven't gotten that excited since Kyle Larson won the championship two years ago. That's how much this meant to me. I've been a huge fan of this guy for a very, very long time. And for him to get the victory is absolutely incredible and absolutely amazing, well-deserved, ran the front all day, I thought he was going to have a shot to get 10 for a top 5, didn't think he was going to get it done, but I'm stoked and pumped for this guy, this is the second straight win for Trackhouse, and Shane Van Gisbergen is also the first Australian driver to win a NASCAR Cup Series race since Marcus Ambrose, back, actually he's technically from New Zealand, but the first driver basically from that continent to win since Marcus Ambrose back in 2012, so massive congratulations, well-deserved for Shane Van Gisbergen, I'm pumped, I'm excited, and I want this guy to be full-time in this sport. So now, we're going to take a look at the race results, and I'll give you my score of today's race and thoughts on the Chicago street course. So Shane Van Gisbergen picks up the victory. Justin Haley finished the second. His best performance of the year for sure. Definitely had a lot of help because of the strategy, but he hung up there and did a really good job hanging on and gets a really strong top five finish. Best run for sure for Justin Haley this season in second. Chase Haley finishes third. Chase Haley, for a guy who struggled all weekend long, it's a great comeback for Chase. Yes, he got help by strategy as well, but he gets a very solid top five. That's his third straight 
straight top five finish in a row, and he's going to make up a lot of points. Great day for Chase Elliott in third. Kyle Larson finishes fourth. I think he's the only guy to really get anything for Shane Van Gisbergen near the end of the race. Unfortunately, got caught up in traffic. Once Shane Van Gisbergen got past him in the middle portion of the later runs, it was going to be hard to beat him. But a great day for Kyle Larson in fourth. He was at times the fastest car on the racetrack, but unfortunately didn't get a chance to get up there. But still a very solid day nonetheless for Kyle Larson in fourth. Kyle Busch finishes fifth. This guy at one point was in the tire bears and bounced back and gets the top five. That's what championship caliber drivers do. For guys who struggled this weekend, fantastic and great comeback for Kyle Busch in fifth place. Really strong run for Kyle Busch in fifth despite the struggles in the beginning. All center finishes sixth. I think that center's second or third top ten all year. Got benefit of cause strategy, but you know what? He hung up there and gets a very solid top ten finish in sixth. Michael McDowell finishes seventh. McDowell, I thought, was going to be a little better today than he was. He probably had a best of fourth to fifth place car, which is still a very solid car, but could have done better. But he still gets solid top ten. Solid run for Michael McDowell in seventh. Joey Logano finishes eighth. Logano got lucky because of strategy as well, but he still gets solid top ten finish. Good run for Joey Logano. Ty Gibbs finishes ninth. Ty Gibbs at points contending for top five. So he got passed by Larson and Shane Van Gisbergen at one point. Dropped back a little bit and ends up finishing ninth. But still ran top ten a lot of day. Good run for Ty Gibbs. First top ten in a while. And Chris Buescher finishes seventh. Another solid run on road course for Chris Buescher. Denny Hamlin finished 11th. Denny Hamlin slightly recovers after his mistakes and issues. Denny Hamlin was really fast and qualified, but can't seem to put the race together on road courses. He finishes 11th. Eric Amrol finished 12th, one of his better performances of the year so far. He still has only got one top 10 this year. But hey, you know what? Got helped by strategy and gets a very solid top 15 finish. William Byer finishes 13th. Struggle for the most part in this race, but gets 13th. He'll probably take that finish. Corley Joy finishes 14. Despite getting drivers and people, he still recovers to finish in the top 15. Saw a run for Corley Joy in 14th. Ryan Priest finishes 15th. You know what? He ran top 15 near the end of the race and was actually legitimately driving up through a pace. That's, I think, his third or fourth straight top, top 20 finish in a row. He's really been the best SHR driver recently at times. So good run for Ryan Priest in 15th. Eric Jones finished 16th. Decent run for him. Age Allmendinger finished 17th. Got caught back up in all that traffic. Allmendinger never was a really big factor. You know, if he's actually my pick coming in a week and I thought he'd do better. Just a little bit of disappointing run for Allmendinger in 17th. Chris Bell finished 18th. It's going to be a race of what should have cut up. Chris Bell, for the most part, had the fastest car in this race and was going to be really tough to beat. But unfortunately, they got in the tire barrier, got stuck behind all that stuff. His pit crew was upset about it, but unfortunately, he didn't capitalize on it, and he finishes 18th. Just a disappointing day because I think Chris Bell is going to run away and be really disappointed about that. Todd Gillen finishes 19th. Saw a run for Todd Gillen in 19th place. Could have been a little better, but again, just... Was stuck in traffic a lot of day. Chase Briscoe finished 20th. I think it's his first top 20 finish in a while. They got to get it together because they've been struggling a lot this year. But they ran top 15 a lot of days, so that's a positive. Jensen Bunn finished 21st. I thought Jensen was going to get a better finish. He never recovered after the spin, but he does finish in the top 25. Ross Chastain finished 22nd. Another racer, Ross Chastain, was unsurprisingly not a contender. He just has not been fast outside of Nashville. I don't know what's going on with the one team, but they've got to figure stuff out if they're going to be a championship threat. Josh Wiggy finished 23rd, one of his better runs of the season. Ran top 25 a lot of the day. That 78 car was pretty fast this weekend, so saw a run for the Live Fast Motorsports team. Brad Kozlowski finished 24th. Noah Grayson, despite getting the wall multiple times, he still finishes top 25. I'll give him that. Andy Lai finished 26th. Daniel Suarez finished 27th. He had some damage on his car after getting the outside wall and never recovered. Just too much damage on the car. He finished 27th. Tyler Reddick finished 28th, a race that he probably should have contended for the win. He basically got an entire bear and cost himself a shot at the victory. He was really fast today. One of the two or three fastest cars in this race. Uh, Kevin Hart finished 29th. Just struggled all weekend. This was was at one point the slowest car on track in practice. I think it was the slowest car in practice. So terrible day for Kevin Harvick. And Harrison Byrne finishes 30th. Bubba Walls finished 31st. Again, Bubba Walls, not a good day for him. He struggled all day long. Just was at one point in top 15, threw it away, and basically wrecked Stenhouse, unfortunately. Just not a good day for him. Mark Trix Jr. finished 32nd. Trux got stuck in traffic and never recovered from that. Ryan Blaney finished 33rd. Ricky Sanders Jr. finished 34th. Ty Dillon finished 35th. Austin Dillon, after crashing out, finished 36th. And Alex Bowen finishes last in 37th place. So now I want to talk about the overall race as a whole, and I'll give you my score of today's race. And I'll talk about the Chicago Street Course event as a whole real quick. First thing I want to say, this race actually went a lot better than I thought. There was a lot of chaos for sure in this race. 
But you know what? The first half of this race is enjoyable, and I think at times this race was actually really, really good. But there was times where this race is a little bit boring, but sometimes with street course racing, street course racing is not always the most exciting. But I will say, this race did go a lot better than I initially thought it was going to be. So, for me, I'm going to give this race overall a 7.5 out of 10. Like I said, I actually enjoyed this race a lot. There was times it was very enjoyable. We got some pretty solid and pretty good racing overall. I actually enjoyed it. I'll give this race overall a 7.5 out of 10. Now I want to talk about the overall uh, street course in the future of this track. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of talk about this. There's been talk they're trying to discuss about extending toward next year. It's just unfortunate how the event went overall this weekend. But you know what? I think we got a really good ending to it. It's a shame all the concerts and festivals did end up getting canceled. Nothing could do with the weather. But at least the weather cooperated for the cup race. It is a little disappointing. I probably have more thought my thoughts on this probably tomorrow on the channel when I discuss some of the stuff in regards to the future of Chicago street course. But I thought the race was pretty exciting. I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. So, that is going to be for the NASCAR Cup Series race review for the Chicago street course. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please just like and subscribe to the channel. Notifications on if I win a video, thus go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Let's go jump over that and comment your thoughts below on today's race. What are your thoughts on today's race? Let me know below. Let me know your score in the comments below. And congratulations, Shane Van Gisbergen, on picking up the victory. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Tomorrow on the channel, I should have two videos on the channel. We'll be having the NASCAR news video on the channel. We'll also likely have some more discussion on the Truck Series race in Mid-Ohio and also get you set up and prepared for Atlanta as well, which is this week. And we're probably going to start looking at that championship bubble as well going to the playoffs. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's race review, and I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.